When Jesus was crucified on the cross, he was fulfilling the scriptures concerning himself. All the scriptures from Genesis to Malachi that talked about him, he was fulfilling them. Jesus was crucified out of the city of Jerusalem to be our sin offering, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify, set apart or make holy the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Hebrews 13, verse 11 to 12. The problem God had is that he is a holy God, and a holy God cannot live inside a sinner. Sin and God cannot cohabit in the same body. Sinners and God cannot dwell in the same house or city. That is why he had to expel Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. God instituted all those animal sacrifices to cover the sins, transgressions and iniquities of the people, so that he could at least come into their midst or come upon them, but still he could not be in them, because they were sinners, not holy or saints. They had forgiveness and atonement or covering of their sins, but they never had remission of their sins. So God could not live in them. Forgiveness and atonement is like a person who commits an offence, but because he or she is a minor, they cannot jail them, so they go free. But it is in their records. If she or he keeps offending, one day when they are of the age of accountability, as soon as they commit an offence, they reopen their records and list all their past offences and jail them. But when our sins are remitted, even our record is clean. We do not have to be afraid that God is numbering all our past sins and transgressions so that one day he will use them against us. So Jesus, the Lamb of God, by dying on the cross, gave us more than forgiveness and covering for sins. He gave us remission of sins. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We have redemption through his blood, the remission of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1 verse 7 The word redemption is a Greek word, apolutrosis, which means to ransom in full. In other words, everything that you and I owe to the law of God has been paid in full. The word remission is the Greek word Ephesus, which means freedom and pardon. In other words, you have been forgiven and you can go free. There is not even a community service to do or any kind of penance. You have been forgiven and you can go free. God says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews 8 verse 12 this is the true meaning of remission. Many believers do not understand it, so even when they ask for forgiveness, they think that God is remembering their past sins or who they used to be before they were saved. They do not understand what remission of sins means. Sinning is breaking God's law. Trespassing is sinning against your neighbor or the holy things of God. And iniquity is practicing a sin or a trespass that it becomes your lifestyle or a sin or trespass that your ancestors used to practice and you are practicing the same thing. Also thinking that you are a god like Satan did and idol worship is iniquity. But Jesus took care of all of that, sin, trespass and iniquity of the entire world, either they believe it or not. Surely he, Jesus, has borne our griefs, maladies, anxieties, calamities and sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, anguishes and pains. Yet we esteemed or reckoned him stricken, smitten or struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded or pierced through for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53 verse 4 to 5 Our transgressions, iniquities and sins were judged by God on the body of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Satan did not kill Jesus, no. 
neither the Romans nor the Jews. They were just instruments. Jesus laid down his life willingly for you and for me. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. John 10 verse 15 You and I are the sheep of his pasture. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. John 10 verse 17 No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. John 10 verse 18 The Godhead had this plan to save the entire world, and Jesus said to the Father, I will go and save them. The wages of sin or breaking God's law is death. That is why Jesus had to die, not for his sins, for he had none, but for my sins and your sins. For he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Our sins were imputed on Jesus, and just like in the Old Testament, the sinner would lay his or her hands on the head of the animal that was to die for his or her sin, Jesus took our sins and died in our stead. It is God who judged our sins, transgressions and iniquities on the body of Jesus, not Satan. We had wronged God, nobody else but God. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him, Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. John 3 verse 16 Greater love has no man than this, that a man, Christ Jesus, lay down his life for his friends. John 15 verse 13 God knew that we could not fulfill his law. No one can. So God came in the body of Jesus to fulfill the law on our behalf and to take it out of the way so that it does not accuse us before God any more. So when Jesus was on that cross, we were on that cross with him. Jesus wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us and he has taken them out of the way, having nailed them on the cross. Colossians 2 verse 14 On the cross, Jesus bore the curses and the penalties contained in the law for the entire world, as well as answering all the types and shadows contained in the law. It was customary in the East and some other countries to cancel bonds or antiquate or make obsolete edicts and decrees to drive a nail through them so that they could not be legible any more. Jesus being the word made flesh, John 1.1, 1, 1, every nail they drove through his body on the cross made a fissure, a rent or a scissure in the handwriting or bond of the law that lay against us. Those handwritings were blotted out and torn into pieces through the nails of the cross of Jesus. Then Jesus was buried and Satan thought he had won. We saw early in the study that Satan is from the Hebrew word Satan, which means an opponent, the arch enemy of good, adversary, and Satan. Satan cannot stand good, everything he does is evil. If we play by his rules, we will lose, but we overcome evil with good. Romans 12 verse 21 Satan did not understand what was going on. He said within himself, This God and Jesus, they are so stupid. How can Jesus, a man without sin, decide to die for a sinful world? So when he was making fun of Jesus on the cross through the Jews and reviling him, he did not know the plan of God. So Jesus, when he had fulfilled all the scriptures, received the vinegar and said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. John 19 verse 30 So while Jesus was in the grave for three days, he went into hell to defeat Satan and his demons for you and me. But on the third day, somebody on the third day, on the third day, 
Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah! He went into the headquarters of Satan in hell to meet Mr. Satan face to face. It was better than an action movie. The seed of the woman, the son of God on his own without anybody's help, went to face Mr. Satan and all his demons in hell, their headquarters. Jesus beat all of them up, trampled them underfoot and bruised the head of Satan. Remember, early in our study, we said that Satan never opens the door of his prisoners, Isaiah fourteen sixteen to 17 Satan was that strong man, armed to the teeth, who kept his palace, his goods were in peace, Luke 11, verse 21. He had the entire world in bondage to sin, they were his prisoners, and he had locked them up in hell with him. But... On the third day, Jesus, a stronger man than he, came upon him and all his demons, took off from them all their armor, wherein they trusted, and Jesus divided their spoils. Luke 11 verse 22 Jesus, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2 verse 15 It is a recorded fact. Jesus paraded Satan and all his cohorts, stripped them naked. Satan and all his cohorts are defeated foes. Jesus' victory over Satan and all his demons is your victory and mine. For we were buried with him in baptism, wherein also we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. Colossians 2 verse 12 the prophet Hosea saw the victory of Jesus over death and hell and was making fun of Satan, and Paul reiterates the same words of Hosea. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave or hell, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 55 to 57. Jesus took away all the sins of the world, past, present and future. Sin will never stand in our way anymore if we choose to be in Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God. Either people believe it or not, it is the truth. All our sins, transgressions and iniquities have been paid for on the body of Jesus. A sting is an organ on a scorpion used to inject its venom. Satan was banking on sin to cause death in mankind, since the wages of sin is death and the soul which sins shall die. But Jesus came and died for the sins of the entire world, past, present and future. Since Jesus died for my sin, I do not have to die for my sins or transgressions or iniquities, past, present or future. I just need to receive Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. The strength of sin was the law. Man is carnal, he cannot delight in the law of God. Nobody could fulfill all the law, so we were always breaking the law of God and we were under its curses and penalties. But Jesus came to fulfill the law on our behalf and nailed it onto the cross so that it will never condemn us again. 1. 2. God starts a new family. Jesus legally retrieved the keys of dominion over the earth from Satan's hand when he rose from the dead together with us. Satan usurped that dominion from mankind at the fall of Adam and Eve because they then ranked lower than him spiritually and he could oppress them and enslave them and snatch what was entrusted to them by God. Satan never had authority at any moment, neither before the fall nor after the fall of mankind. Jesus tells us in John 10 that Satan is a thief and robber, even an armed robber. A thief or armed robber does not have a legal authority, but he has power and dominion over a person through his power to take what is another person's and oppresses that person. If Satan had legal authority at any time, he would not be a thief and a robber. When, for instance, a city is ruled by mafia groups, shops and people pay taxes for protection to them. 
they have usurped the authority of the government in that city. In 2 Kings 11, Queen Athalia usurped the authority over the kingdom after she had murdered all the sons of the king. She ruled for six years until Joash rightfully claimed his throne. You and I, born-again Christians, through Christ Jesus, the rightful heir of the throne of God, have received legal authority to exercise power to destroy the works of the devil, to trample underfoot serpents, scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Luke 10 verse 19 Jesus, having risen from the dead, we can go back to plan one. Be like in the Garden of Eden. Jesus, the firstborn of this new creation of God, has the keys of dominion and spiritually. He made every born-again Christian rank higher than Satan and his demons, thus giving us authority over all the works of God and the authority over Satan that the first Adam lost at his fall. God created every one of us to have dominion over the works of his hands and administer the earth on his behalf, using his authority and power. Genesis 1 verse 28 God can start his new family and come to be in them. So, on the resurrection morning, Jesus said to Mary, Touch me not, or do not cling to me, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. John 20, verse 17 He went to heaven, and put his blood on the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies in heaven. Christ Jesus, our high priest, entered the most holy place once for all. Having obtained eternal redemption, Hebrews 9 verse 12. For without the shedding of the blood there is no remission, Hebrews 9 verse 22. Jesus will not come back on earth to die for the sin of anybody. He did it once and for all. It is up to people to receive him and believe in his finished work on the cross. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, or not to deal again with sin, for he has done it, once for all, but for salvation or resurrection of our mortal bodies. Hebrews 9 verse 28 and Romans 8 verse 23 So there is nothing standing against mankind and God. Jesus removed the sin, took back the keys of dominion of the earth from Satan and nailed on the cross all the curses and penalties contained in the law that were against us, even opened the prison door in hell, the headquarters of Satan, so that you and I can go free. The only thing we need to do is to receive Jesus into our life and be born again. Since sin has been taken out of the way through Christ, Jesus, after he had put his blood in heaven, came back to his disciples. Prior to the cross, his disciples had the Holy Spirit with them and upon them, but the Holy Ghost could not be in them. Because they were sinners, they had the Adamic nature. But Jesus promised them, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter or helper, that he may abide with you for ever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and shall be in you. John 14, verse 16 to 17. So Jesus came to them on resurrection evening, and breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. John 20, verse 22. The new family of God has started with Jesus being the firstborn of that new creation. Jesus did to the disciples what God did when he created Adam and Eve and breathed his Holy Spirit into them. Adam and Eve fell, and the Holy Spirit departed from them, but Jesus said that this new creation that God is starting will be different. The Holy Spirit will abide forever. How could a holy God live in a human being? Once upon a time we were sinners in that prison of sin, where Satan kept us and would not let us go. 
But Jesus came and died for our sins, nailed all the curses and the penalties of breaking God's law on the cross, plundered Satan, opened the prison doors so we can go free. The only way to enjoy all the perfect work of Jesus on our behalf and be part of that new family is to be born again. Jesus tells everybody who wants to be members of the household of God to be born again. John 3 verse 3 The world does not realize that the prison door is open. They can come out of that bondage of Satan whenever they want to. As soon as a person is born again, all his or her sins, past, present and future, are remitted, are blotted out and are wiped away. He or she has been ransomed in full. That is what redemption means. His or her sins have been remitted, expunged, and they can go free, if only they surrender their life to Christ. To be continued.